Hello and welcome to Just Pick Up a Pen. I'm your host Doris Fulgraber and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a screen recording from my iPad Pro. The app that we're going to work with is called iFont Maker in the App Store. You can see it here on the top right hand corner. I've already purchased it. I believe it costs about $10. So you purchase it and you download it and then you open it. And this is the first page that comes up. It's your, your documents landing page. As you can see, I've already created a couple of fonts. Your page is probably going to be empty when you first start it. And um, that's okay because we're going to make a new one now. So let's click on new. And I'm using my Apple Pencil as well here, which you can't really see, but that's why I'm talking you through it. All right. So starting off then with a new font, this is going to be your work area. You can see that the space in the center already has kind of a grayed out shadow capital a at the back of it that is going to be a reference alphabet i'll show you in just a minute how to change that if you want to change it but let's start at the uh, top and then work our way down so we're looking at the latin alphabet here and if you're scrolling through this little library that you will be filling with all your individual uh, icons and glyphs that are going to make up your own font you can add um, the basic 99 characters in the Latin alphabet are all the uppercase and lowercase letters and you're going to have numbers and some symbols as well. But if you'd like your font to be available and um, usable with other European languages, for example, you're going to need to add diacritics and umlauts and maybe, you know, a, a pound sign and a euro sign. And so you have Latin accented glyphs here as well that you can put in and extensions and you can also access all of those uh, library options by clicking on the little world symbol here. So you see how many glyphs are in each extension and you're not just limited to Western alphabets. As you can see, you also can use kanji and um, Cyrillic and, and uh, Thai. This export button is for when we are done to configure and build the font. So we're not quite there yet. So we're going to leave that for now. Moving to the bottom of the screen, you're seeing the long um, dark shape in the bottom left hand corner. That is the, the size or the shape of the brush that we're going to use. And by clicking on it, you can change this brush. You can make it look a little more varied. You can make it, you know, have a little bit of an edge to it. Actually, I think I might and um, you have a couple of options there. You can use an angled version if you want to make a black letter or a gothic kind of calli calligraphic uh, piece. And why don't we use this little raggedy looking thing? And then over here, this slider, you can change the size. It is by default set to 100%. So let's make a little, ooh, that's rather large. So let me reduce that maybe to 70. Uh, there we go. And then now here I can, by clicking on the, the three lines or by clicking on the percentage sign, I can tell it to apply this stroke weight to all the glyphs. And uh, let's do that because we've only just started. So you see how all the strokes that we had made, even though they were a different size, they're actually changing to, to that size. And now, since that doesn't really look like an A, we can go to the scissors below it and say clear, and then we're going to have a, a clear canvas again. Okay, let me just show you, walk you through all the different buttons before we get started to give you an overview. So if we're now at the dark gray um, drawer below where we just selected the brush and everything you have the arrow to the left and the arrow to the right and that is for moving forward and backwards through the alphabet if you want to you know you can i think you can click on it as well if you tap into the drawer up there into your library but um, if you just want to move forward while you're down here you can click those arrows since you are working on an iPad, you have the opportunity, of course, to um, 
pinch in to, to zoom in and zoom out. And if you do that and you want to get back to having a 100% work window of your letter, you can click on this um, magnifying glass with the, with the equals sign in it. And then that's going to get you back to 100%. The T uh, for text option, if you click on there, it gives you uh, popular fonts that will show up in the background that you can use as a reference as you are designing your own letters. So you have the sans serif prints, you have um, the serif prints if you want if you want your font to have these brackets and stuff and when you scroll all the way to the bottom you're also going to have a version of a script that you can use as a uh, as a guide let me see can i find it can i find it i know that it was way down here it's the snell round hand which is very similar to kind of a copper plate style and um so it's it's nice to have the kind of guide in the background, although I'm going to say that if you're just starting out for the first time making a font your own, trying to make a cursive font where all the letters connect is going to be a little more fidgety and it's going to need a lot of refinement because all the entrance and exit strokes have to be just so. So for a quick and dirty kind of um, example, let's just stick with the sans serif print font. Okay. All right. And um, I do like to have something in the background to work off of, and I think that's going to be helpful for you as well. Moving on in terms of the buttons, this brush, of course, is the signaling that we our brush is active and that we can now start drawing. As you can see, oh, look, even um, it changes a little bit depending on how I move it. Very nice. That is the counterclockwise button that I just pressed there to undo, but you probably thought that already. Okay, so this is the brush button that we're going to use as we are drawing the letters. And then next to it, the arrow button, and tells you that you can edit a path because this is very much like, um, if you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator and creating vector paths in iPhone Maker also, you have anchor points and Bezier curves. So if this particular stroke that we just made is a too round for you, you can change the handles and that will that will affect just this one path. And you can copy, delete and convert those anchor points as well. I believe you can rotate them uh, if you want, but uh, that's probably in the other one. Okay. So um, whichever path you want to change, whichever lines you want to kind of go and make a little straighter, you can do that here. When you're done editing your path, you can click back to brush and move on to the next letter or add some more embellishments to the letter that you have. For example, if you wanted to add a drop shadow, you could change your brush here. You could make it really, really small. And then you can add a line for a, for a drop shadow and then that might be your A, okay? And now change back to the brush that we had, change it back to 70% that we had. So it makes sense to kind of remember those numbers that you had as well. The next button is the pen tool. So let's use that. Ooh, let's use that for the B. And to be quite honest, I haven't really used this because I believe it only it lets you make shapes. I'm not sure if it lets you make stroke as, strokes as well. So if you if I click the <clears throat> the Apple Pencil to the top left corner of the B and then to the bottom corner of the B and I drag it out, you see it makes this kind of teardrop shape. So it doesn't really, it combines everything. And let's take a step back, step back, step back and delete that. Because if I do that here and here and draw another one and another one, and another one and then go up again. There's kind of a B, but um, I'm not sure <laughs> I'm happy with that. So I tend to not use the pen tool. I prefer the brush because it gives me more control over the movement that I make. And it has this, you know, a, a more handwritten feel to it. And I happen to like handwritten feels. Moving on to the next icon here, this um, 
crossroads, if you will. This is for scaling and rotating. So you can move the letter around, and that's going to be interesting later when we look at kerning, because the yellow cross line where the baseline intersects with the vertical um, guide is where the letters are, you know, connected and grounded. And so there's going you want to make sure that the distance is kind of the same between all of them. And you can also make it smaller or larger, again, with the two fingers zooming in, pinching in, pinching out. And then last but not least, we have this layers symbol. And this is where you can fidget with these guidelines that we haven't that we've that I, I just mentioned the yellow cross but this is where the guidelines come in so um, very quick typography course the descender line the one at the very bottom is where your lowercase loops from the j and the g and the y for example hits the baseline is where all the letters literally sit on the x height is the height of a lowercase letter the cap height line is where you want your uppercase letters to to be and then the ascender line is where the loops of your L's and K's and B's um, are going to hit. And you can, while in this layer mode, you can move the lines across. So you can, uh, you know, tap your descender line with the Apple Pencil and you can move it up or down. And you can tap your X height line and you can move it up or down. So if you're you know you're not you're not beholden to the example that you chose you can also choose a different example you can choose a photo that you might have i don't have any ready right now so i'm not going to go into my library or you can choose let's cancel that or you can choose none whatsoever when if you just want to do a free form uh, alphabet then if you go to the next letter you don't have a c there but i kind of like the example so let's let's move um with a basic, you know, example letter alphabet. And um, actually, we can leave the X height kind of halfway if you want, or you can reset the guides to fit with the example that you have and to adjust it. And then um, that concludes <laughs> the demonstration of the layers button. The scissors we've already kind of talked about later. Um, actually, let me show you something else. If we go back to the A. So whenever the brush is active, you're going to see the letter that you already made. So I'm going to stick with the brush now. And now, for example, when you clear, um, click on the scissors, you have the opportunity to copy all. And then as we're moving forward into the Latin accented ones, if we're finding a a capital A that has an accent on it, we can click the scissor again and we can paste. So we don't have to rewrite all of those letters and then we just add the accent on top. Et voila, ready to rumble, you know? So let's go back to where we were. The next to the scissors, we have the counterclockwise, which is the undo button. And then we have the redo button and the triangles to move through the alphabet I've already showed you. Okay. Any questions so far? Now, moving quite quickly, I'm going to put all the letters in. I'm going to just put the, um, the basic Latin alphabet letters in, and then I'm going to show you how to, how to export it, actually. Okay. So now you have the option to do all these. You can move through quite quickly and make them whatever you want them to be. Add maybe a little flare if you like. And now here when you go on the preview button, once you have all your letters ready, you go in the preview button and you can start typing A. And whatever letter you don't have ready yet is going to be grayed out. So we only have A, B, C, D in the caps lock. So let's do, let's write cap. Oh, I need the caps lock. Come on. Cab, I can write cab. I can write bad. And those two are already nice to look at in terms of kerning. 
kerning and spacing um, are two different things. Spacing is from uh, letters as a whole to one another with the relationship they have to one another and how far apart or how close together they are. And kerning is specifically for letter pairs. So sometimes when you have um, a triangular letter like an A next to a round letter like a D or an O, there um, there's a lot of uh, white space in between and you want to visually adjust the space so that it looks as if it's the same outside the letters as it is inside the letters because that is what makes you know calligraphy um, good looking and we want to make sure that everything looks good it's not a mathematical thing it's it's more of a an optical adjustment and we can with iFont maker it makes it really easy to kind of play around with it see if I drag the letter spacing back and forth a little bit so say if I wanted it to be a little more condensed I would go to maybe minus 20 22 and then the word spacing I might to make sure that the difference between cab and bad is legible and that people don't think it's I'm writing cabot um, I might set that to be a little wider okay and then you can click on to the kernings tab and this is where all the different opportunities for the individual letter combinations come out and you can select um, various options for you text that have been pre-written where you can have a look at what it what they look like and where you can go in and and adjust the kerning and so we haven't really written that many letters yet but there is one um, about the the capital letters a triple a a b a a c a those are called necklaces so those are the ones that we're going to look at and I think the, the, the A's next to one another look good. But for example, the A following the B has a wider space than the B following the A. So I'm going to just tap my Apple Pencil to that second A and I'm going to move it a little closer. So now all the A's that will follow the B's will be closer. Just like all the A's following the C's should probably be a little closer and a little closer to the D's as well definitely the F's as well. You get the idea. You can change all of them to be visually equal, to have a visually equidistance. Actually, maybe uh, let me put that B uh, over just a tad so the bottoms of the letters, the bottom bowl um, and the stem don't touch or aren't quite so close. Okay, and then when you're done, you can have phrases, you can have a list, uh, um, or you. So this is what they look like in a phrase, and this is what they look like in a list. And you can take a note of these numbers, and you can make sure that you um, that you apply the same numbers to all um, to all options. Going back in here, a pangram. If we had, um, if you wanted to add a, a more, you can do that as well. You have the opportunity here to add specific ligatures, which we haven't done yet. And um, when you're done with all your letters and when you're done with all your kerning, you can click done. And then when you're ready to export it, you go up here and you say configure and build font. And then you give it a title. Let's say uh, big brush test and then you write your name because you are the author. And then I generally set mine to private unless until I'm done um, tweaking them and um, testing them. If there's a contact, if there's a license, if there's a URL and then you can build it online and um, the longer the more glyphs you have obviously the longer it's going to take and it gives you a it gives you a place online where it lives inside the app let me just take a, a screenshot of this so i don't lose it and so 154112 is the pin because we set it to private if we set it to public there wouldn't be a pin but if we click on here and say we open it 
and then we add the pin it already copied it perfect and we say enter and then iFontMaker gives you this page where it has a bunch of um, text already ready and since we don't have a lot of letters you can't really see a lot so let me show you one where I have a little more letters and we can do done go back to documents and I'm going to show you my script et voila et voila beautiful so this is now what it looks like when you have all the letters filled in and uh, iFont maker gives you um, a text actually let me see can I here we go we can scroll over and you can see all the individual letters you can see what it looks like with the text that it's made up and so this is then where I would suggest you download your font and you test it in a couple of Adobe applications or in a couple of um, word processing applications and you know maybe send it to a few friends of yours and have them write some things out and tell you if there is some you know some some big mistakes if they find some letter combinations that you haven't current properly and then you can go over that and you can go back into the app and fix the mistakes and rebuild it and that's it okay i hope you enjoyed the overview of iFont Maker and when you make your own fonts please let me know and put your hashtag just pick up a pen on it and tag me if you post it on social media I'd love to see it thanks <laughs>